So today, I'm going to winterize our RV. Here's what you'll need. Links are in the description and blog post. Of course, every RV is different, but we're just following the instructions for our RV, for our casita. Okay, first I'm going to drain the fresh water tank from its low point drain. That's right here. So there's a fresh water tank. We only had a little bit left in here already. So I'll just be draining that last bit out. Now I'm going to drain the gray and black tanks. Always dump black before you dump gray. Ooh, the stinky slinky squirms. Next, I'm going to empty out the water out of the hot water tank. So I just need to remove the anode rod if your has an anode rod. Sometimes it just has a cap, but ours does have an anode rod. Always release the pressure <laughs> using this before you remove that knob, or you may. What happens if you don't do you that? You may regret it. Something <laughs> may happen like this. Always remove that pressure, especially if it's hot. If you had hot water, it's gonna be extra high pressure in here. This is the anode rod I just pulled out. This is the new one I'm gonna replace it with. This is what you want it to look like. This degrades as, in, as a sacrificial element to protect the water tank, so it degrades this instead of the tank. My best guess is this is the original anode rod. It's about two years old at this point but depending on the type of water you use and how much time you spend in the camper, it could degrade faster or slower. Okay, I put the plumber's tape back on this new anode rod and I'm gonna put that in here. Now we're gonna hook up an air compressor to the city water inlet and blow all the remaining water out of the water lines. We have a Viar air compressor, that's what we use. We've, really, we've had this for years and love it. So I'll hook this up to the batteries. And it, the car does need to be running to get enough power to run this compressor for it. But let me get it all set up first. And so we have the Viar winterization kit. So this is the adapter that screws into the city water inlet that allows your air hose to connect. And this is the gauge to help protect it from getting too highly pressured. So, and then that just connects to this. And you turn it on and you blow the air out. Compressor's running, I'll go inside and start running the water. Okay, drain the faucets. So I've got water coming out now. Quickly turns to air. I'll do the cold or let's do the hot. And the shower head. Make sure you run every single faucet, shower head, any external showers, any sinks, toilet. Some RVs have dishwashers or laundry machines. Make sure you get the water blown out of every line that has anything in water. Make sure you do both hot and cold. Go through it and then get the antifreeze into all those lines. Okay, now that I've got all of the water out of the lines, I'm gonna seal the bottom of the fresh tank, put that drain back in. I'm also going to go underneath the bed and access the hot water tank and do the bypass valve so I do not refill the hot water tank with my RV antifreeze. The water will be going right past it with the bypass. And so when I put all the new antifreeze into the fresh tank, the pump will then drive that antifreeze into all the lines so that all the lines are protected. Same as before. We're going to make sure we run all of the lines, the outside shower, the toilet, both faucets for the bathroom and for the kitchen. If you have a more advanced RV, there's going to be many more things you need to make sure that the antifreeze gets into. There's phase two of the winterization. So now we're going to put the cap back on the freshwater drain. So we don't want to drain out our new RV antifreeze. And now we can fill our fresh tank, not fill it, but put some RV antifreeze in our fresh tank. 
I got a couple new jugs, but these two jugs are what I kept from last year. So if you do this right, you can actually reuse a lot of the antifreeze you used from the previous year. And I'd recommend bringing a funnel next time. All right, so I'm out of campground and I forgot my funnel at home, so I just took a water bottle and I cut a hole in it. So hopefully this will work as my funnel today. That's what RV life is all about, improvisation. Improvisation. You should put this in an RV hacks book. <laughs> I should. Look at how Look at this! That is working beautifully. Our RV is pretty small, so we only need a couple gallons. But if you have a big RV, you'll probably need a lot of gallons of this. But remember, if you do it right, you can recycle and reuse a lot of their antifreeze. And it would also depend on where your pump inlet is. If your inlet has a, is at a low enough point in the tank to really get that tiny bit of antifreeze you got in there. Let's see how we're looking. It's pretty low. I'm gonna put another gallon in so I make sure that the pump can get a hold of it. Okay, so I got about three gallons of antifreeze in here now. So you can see the pink down here. So that should be enough for the pump to fill the lines and start coming out. Let's go try it out. Okay, again, I wanna remind you that make sure you bypass your hot water heater because if you don't, you're gonna end up pulling gallons and gallons of antifreeze into your hot water heater. I'll turn on my pump. Wait till it comes out pink. Okay, that's the cold line. Let's do the hot line. Get your outside shower. Okay, so that's it. We've got pink coming through all of the faucets. Every single place there was water before is now the RV antifreeze. So our RV is winterized. We're ready to put it into storage. I do also plan on taking out my battery out of the battery bay so that I can keep that in a warm environment to charge it over the winter. And I will also, because I have a portable generator, I'm gonna be putting some fuel stabilizer in with the generator fuel to store it over the winter as well. Every RV is different, but I'm gonna put the steps that we follow to winterize our camper over at our blog post over at rvlove.com. All the links are down below in the description. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you on the road.